Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. Today we are presenting the second lecture of the cyclic voltammetry series. In this video, I am going to talk about electrochemical cell, reference electrode and counter electrode. Before I proceed with today's content, let me recap the previous lecture a bit. Cyclic voltammetry is a popular electrochemical characterization tool by which one can study the characteristics of a redox reaction. And the redox reaction which we study with the cyclic voltammetry is basically a heterogeneous reaction that happens on the working electrode surface. The term cyclic stands for the variation of the potential or as we apply the voltage across the working electrode and the reference electrode. I, I was also showing an animation by which we can actually show the voltage starts from a negative value, crosses zero, reach to a positive value, again comes back to negative value and in each cycle the same thing repeats. I will run the animation once again so you can see how the voltage varies cycle 1, cycle 2 and cycle 3. Now we come to today's topic. Okay, that was the cyclic variation minus V zero to plus V again zero then minus V. So this is the cycle going on in every time and that is why it's cyclic voltage. So now I'll be talking about an electrochemical cell. It is very important because in our plus two level study or in our BSc level courses, we always learn about electrochemical cell. There we do not directly learn about cyclic voltammetry and suddenly in our research or higher study we study about cyclic voltammetry and then we can't correlate what is the relation or what are the differences between studying an electrochemical cell or studying a cyclic voltammetry. So in order to make a bridge between these two knowledge or knowledge gap whatever you say I am taking the example of an electrochemical cell, a typical electrochemical cell initially, then I will be exploring the cyclic voltammetry one by one. So this is a typical electrochemical cell wherein we have copper sulphate in the left hand side. There are two chambers, this is the left chamber and this is the right chamber. So in the left chamber we have a copper sulphate solution. The concentration could be a known one, say one molar copper sulphate concentration. But here I have not shown any quantitative estimation for today's video. I'll be coming with quantitative estimation in the upcoming videos. But this particular video is just to clarify the concept. So we have copper sulphate in the left compartment and we have zinc sulphate in the right compartment and those two compartments are separated by a porous plug. The function of this particular porous plug is to allow transfer of ions from one chamber to the other chamber. So this is similar to the salt bridge which we have already studied in our class 2 level in our school chemistry. So now we just talk about the symbols. So if you see the symbol stands for those ions. So the red symbol stands for copper plus 2 ion. The green symbol stands for the zinc plus 2 ions. And the yellow symbol stands for sulphate ions. So sulphate ions are common in both the compartments. Now uh, we, we actually dipped copper electrode or a copper bar inside copper sulphate solution and the zinc bar inside zinc sulphate solution. Now let us look at the electrochemical cell because the redox potential is very important to decide the spontaneity of a particular chemical reaction or a half cell chemical reaction. Now if you remember what a half cell is, if you have a solution say copper sulphate solution and you dip copper into it that creates a half cell. Similarly, if you only have zinc sulphate solution and if you dip zinc rod into this zinc sulphate solution, it will create another half cell. Now what this porous plug is doing, it is joining two half cells 
and we are having a complete electrochemical cell. Now if we look at the redox, this is the redox potential. So the copper redox potential is positive. What does it mean? It means that copper plus 2 will readily go to copper. So this process may be spontaneous. Similarly, zinc plus 2 plus, uh, that means redox potential of zinc plus 2 is negative. That means zinc is not spontaneously going to, going for reduction, rather it will prefer oxidation. That means if you put on zinc rod inside zinc sulfate solution, what it will do, it will readily come out as zinc plus 2 inside the solution. So if you just visualize, you have put zinc rod inside zinc sulfate. So this, I mean from the rod, zinc plus 2 ions will come and it will fill the chamber. So this process will gradually go on. So more and more ions will leave the zinc rod and come to the solution. So after some time, there will this zinc rod will be corroded and the mass will be lost because more and more zinc plus two leaving the surface of the rod going to the solution. That is why mass is reducing. So now let me talk about this electrochemical cell. So this is very important to visualize and that is why I have taken an animation just to make you understand. So the process is we have two half cells. We have combined two half cells by this porous plug and we have also connected uh, these two electrodes externally by a connecting wire. And in at the middle we have put one lamp or you can say one light that could be a light emitting diode or something like that. So what will happen when everything is switched on? Switched on means we don't have any external battery here. Rather this electrochemical cell itself uh, works as a battery or as a potential source and as the potential source, I mean the potential is generated, there will be transfer of electrons. So initially, let us try to visualize. So as I have mentioned, once I dip zinc, zinc plus 2 will go from the electrode to the solution. So when zinc plus 2 is going, it is basically forming, so a particular zinc molecule atom will uh, is forming zinc plus 2 ion and 2 electrons. So this uh, animation will be helpful. So if you see and just focus on this particular part, what will happen? Zinc, uh, zinc atom will form zinc plus 2, zinc plus 2 will come here and the electron will start flowing. So you can see zinc plus 2 is forming, electron starts flowing, it glows the light and these electrons combine with a copper plus 2 and forming atomic copper. So what has happened actually? Some zinc has come out from this electrode surface. So this electrode has lost one atom of zinc. At the expense of this loss, what happened here? It gained another atom. So gradually it will be gaining atoms and it will be losing atoms. Now, if you, if I just show the simulation once again, you will see another sulphate ion is coming from this chamber to that chamber. I will show it again. Just focus here. The sulphate ion will be coming from this chamber to that chamber. Yeah, this one. So why it is happening? This is happening because if you just try to think logically. So initially this part was neutral. That means zinc was neutral. Now from zinc, one zinc plus two ions come to this compartment. Now initially the number of Zn plus two ions and the number of SO4 minus two ions were same. If there were 100 Zn plus two, there were also 100 sulfate ions. Now once 
one additional Zn plus 2 ions come from this electrode, then this chamber become, I mean the electroneutrality of the chamber destroys and it actually gets additional Zn plus 2 ion. But it cannot happen that there is uh, there is no electroneutrality in a particular chamber and that is why to maintain the electroneutrality what it does from this chamber SO4 minus 2 ions come to that chamber so there were there were there was plus 2 additional charge that is being neutralized by plus minus 2 additional charge which is coming from the copper sulfate chamber to the zinc sulfate chamber and this process will keep on going more and more Zn plus 2 will come to the solution and more and more copper will be forming at this electrode and by this what actually happens if you see this those are the reactions going on that is copper plus 2 gaining 2 electrons giving copper atom and that is happening here on the copper electrode and on the zinc electrode zinc is losing 2 electrons and it is giving zinc plus 2 ions and zinc plus 2 is coming here and this two electrons is going from this compartment to that and forming this copper. Now as this process keep on going originally you will be seeing something like this. The copper electrode will gain mass and this zinc electrode will keep on corroding. So if you do this particular uh, reaction uh, then you will visualize this particular thing happens. So we understood the electrochemical cell and from this electrochemical cell we also understood the two redox processes that go or that goes on in a particular electrochemical cell and those are the two redox processes. So in electro in cyclic voltammetry we also do the similar thing and this redox reactions happen in a heterogeneous fashion on the working electrode and we basically measure the amount of current that is being generated during the reaction and at what potential that is being generated not only that there is a, there are some roles of the diffusion diffusion coefficients of the ions which is not captured in this electrochemical cell but in cyclic voltammetry, the diffusivity and convective, convective transport, everything plays role. I will keep on adding more and more videos where I will be talking about those aspects. But for today, we understood electrochemical cell. Now we talk about the reference electrode. So if you remember in my last video, I talked about a reference electrode and the purpose of using the reference electrode was to maintain the potential around this reference electrode constant so that we can measure the working electrode potential in with reference to this reference electrode potential and that was the purpose of using reference electrode I clearly mentioned in my previous video. Now today's question is how exactly this electrode maintains elect maintains constant potential this is very important to understand so this is the typical uh, reference electrode uh, this is this image is taken from gambry uh, one popular potential start uh, company they sell potential stat and electrodes so the people who are working in electrochemistry they already know so what is there in this particular electrode? So I have taken a simple diagram where I am trying to show you what ex exactly there in a typical reference electrode. Ref there are multiple reference electrodes but I took the example of AG AGCL for this particular video. So there are three parts in a reference electrode. One is there is a AGCL coated AG electrode this particular wire which is dipped inside a chamber and this is the chamber what is there inside this chamber inside that chamber it has KCl potassium chloride saturated solution so what you have you have a chamber you are dipping a wire and the wire is AGCl coated AG wire 
and the third part is at the bottom there is a porous plug and this porous plug porosity is very less and they call it frit. So <clears throat> a particular reference electrode has three parts. One is AG, AG, AGCL coated AG where a chamber where you have KCL saturated solution at the bottom you have a porous plug which is called frit. Now what is the purpose of this frit? Initially I am talking about it. So the purpose is when this when you put this electrode inside your electrolytic solution that is under observation. So whenever you do a CV you have an electrolytic solution that you put inside the electrochemical cell and then you dip your electrode. So when you are dipping the electrode this porous plug maintains a connectivity between this internal KCL solution to uh, with the external electrolyte that is under observation and that connectivity is important to measure the potential or current. If you don't have the connectivity it, it behaves like it behaves like a dielectric material just dipping inside the solution and that won't do any that won't serve any purpose and that's why this connectivity is important but one thing is also being ensured by the freight the porosity is very less so that this KCL saturated solution that should not come out that should not leak enough to the external electrolyte at the same time external electrolyte should not go to the internal electrolyte with a very high rate. So these things are properly maintained by this frit and it is recommended that after every use you put the electrode in a KCL solution and the concentration of that KCL solution should be little less than the saturated one. So what I am telling after your electrode use you should be keeping your electrode inside KCL solution but that particular solution should not be totally saturated because what happens if it is totally saturated then during evaporation and all the concentration goes even higher and some of the crystals uh, form uh, and those crystals may, may plug may choke that pores in the frit and that will create problem for your study and that is why it is recommended you should be using KCL solution but it should not be totally saturated. Now I am coming to why the potential is constant this is very important. So the potential is constant because of this AG, AGC, AGCL coated AG. So the complete cell reaction is this particular reaction. That is AgCl plus electron giving you Ag plus Cl minus. So if you, uh, this would be actually equilibrium sign is not equal because this is the equilibrium process both the way it will be going. So uh, this would be an equilibrium sign. Now what is happening? So the potential due to this particular electrode re reaction is given given by E equal to E naught minus RT by F ln activity of chlorine minus. So this is uh, coming from the Nernst equation. This is a very popular equation. So here you can see the potential of this particular electrode actually or only depends on the activity of the chloride and it because the activity of AG and AgCl are both one. That's why we have not taken care of those activities. So it only depends on Cl minus. Now as the KCl solution is saturated inside this chamber, the Cl minus concentration inside this chamber does not change or even if it changes, it changes very marginally. So you can actually assume that the concentration of Cl minus inside this chamber always remains constant and that gives you the flexibility of considering constant potential because you can see from the Nernst equation if Cl minus is constant everything is constant so E is constant. So this is the mechanism by which we can actually maintain constant potential. I have already talked about the role of the frit. Now 
we have ended the discussion on the reference electrode now going back to the counter electrode so la in my last lecture i talked about the purpose of using counter electrode is to passage of current and that's why as this particular electrode the current passes through this particular electrode so the conductivity of this particular electrode has to be very high if not then there will be problem of uh, current transfer uh, maybe unnecessary heat will be generated and your experiment may be uh, hampered and that's why the electrode should be taken a very high conductivity electrode and it should also be inert because uh, there should not be unwanted reaction around the counter electrode and uh, to ensure that you should use an inert material for your counter electrode so uh, in general those are the electrodes which are being used as a counter electrode those are platinum counter electrode uh, graphite counter electrode or gold counter electrode so these two metals gold and platinum those are very inert though they do not react with other components in general uh, similarly uh, uh, graphite is also very inert uh, they also don't do unwanted reactions so sometimes graphite electrodes are also used as counter but most popular one is platinum and gold so I mean they are very inert and they have very high conductivity and that's why those are used as counter electrodes so in this video I discussed up to this in the upcoming video I'll, I'll be talking about the electrode reaction or the working electrode if you uh, if you remember if you see I have not discussed about the working electrode in this particular video because working electrode reaction is very important I'll be making another video on working electrode I'll be talking about heterogeneous reaction kinetics I'll be talking about diffusion reaction everything so I'll be dividing the videos into qualitative discussion and quantitative discussion so in the qualitative discussion we'll be focusing on the concepts whereas in the quantitative discussion we'll be focusing on the mathematics how exactly you need to quantify the current how exactly you need to quantify the concentration which is being changed during the reaction so we'll be talking more about those things i hope this series will be helpful for you if so kindly subscribe to our channel and share those videos with your peers so that we get more motivation to upload videos